Hi, and welcome to another episode of Texas Flycaster. This time we're going to delve into the world of fly tying video. It's something I've avoided like the plague for a while because, to tell you the truth, fly tying videos are about the worst thing there is in, in fly fishing right now. There, there aren't very many good videos out there. But I'm going to try to do something different here. I'm not too enthusiastic about the, the whole fly tying video thing. Um, take a look. I'll appreciate any creative uh, input you might have, and thanks for watching. If you know some strange sounds today, we are coming to you live recorded from the Fly Bar outdoors in Central North Texas. So uh, not only do we have wind chimes, wind, dogs, and chickens, we got all kinds of things going on. We'll start uh, this uh, first video with a uh, show of ingredients for the Coyote Carp Fly variant. And I'm just going to dictate this uh, as it comes up. I don't like the audio on my uh, camera, so we're just uh, re-recording the audio over the top. First thing you need is some green thread. It doesn't have to be too fine. Don't worry about breaking thread. Brass color bead chain eyes, size medium. Gamakatsu SC15. That is the hook that we came up with after trying several different hooks for this. Gamakatsu SC15, size 4. Then, as we work our way through the ingredients, you're going to need silly legs, one, one of those. You're going to need some peacock hurl. Marabou green. This is what makes it a variant from the coyote carp fly. And you will also need some uh, sparkle like that, just some fine stuff. And an optional twist or two of hen hackle. I just took what I had and I used that on this video. Okay, let's get to the actual tying of the fly. Okay, the first thing we do as usual is just run a uh, line of thread to the back and back to the front. Um, nothing special about that. If you hear me pause and refresh, that would be a uh, beautiful session beer. B chain eyes, they go on top. They don't have to be too far back. This is nothing like a uh, clouser or anything like that. So we're just going to tie in these B chain eyes and glue them. Of course you have to glue your eyes in so that they won't turn around and get twisted. Carp are very hard on flies. Look at those hands. Steady as a rock. Go back to the back. That's where I stop. We're going to put a dab of glue on the eyes. If I was doing this without video, I'd go ahead and flip it over and put another dab on the bottom because that's really the best spot for the glue. But for the sake of the camera, we'll do it this way. Now it's time to get these silly legs in and what you want to do with those. Those are kind of like a counterbalance. They help guarantee that this fly still runs with hook up. If you've got a fly that's not running hook up, you're going to run into all kinds of problems with getting snagged on the bottom and grass and little roots of grass and things like that. And it's a, basically a worthless fly. Um, it's a very light hook so you can really easily bend this hook trying to pull it loose from something. And as I discovered you can actually break these hooks real easy in a vise if you've got a... this vise is a little bit oversized but I use this vise because um, it rotates a little bit. Um, if you want to send contributions in to get me a really nice new rotating vise, feel free to contact me and I'll make sure to get those funds in my account. Oh, we're already off to the, uh, to the races here with the peacock. I take two strands of peacock, twist them together, and then rotate them around so that they uh, are more durable. Everybody knows how, how brittle peacock is. Wrap it to the front, real simple. You might double at the front, fatten it up a little bit, then... As you know, you can wrap a couple that way, wrap a couple the other way, and a couple more the other way, and you've got a secure tie of that stuff. And what you can do, peacock, snap it off just like that. Real simple. 
This is a really quick fly to tie, and um, that's that quickness and the uh, few ingredients that it takes and the simplicity. Those are all that are required. Each one of those and every one of those is required to make a good carp fly. A little marabou going in. You just want enough to go past the hook. Kind of gives it, when that thing stops at the bottom, that marabou kind of does a flutter thing and the carp just love it. If my mom is watching, please don't watch this video. I know I should have been a surgeon. Just forget about it. It's not going to happen. All right, there goes some quality video. Top of my hand, big ugly fingers. At least I quit biting my nails. Okay, once you get that marabou tied in, you might even, if you have the time, go ahead and glue that because I cannot emphasize how tough the carp are on fly. Um, here we go. We're going to line up some of that um, flash there and put the flash in. In just a second I'm waiting I'm waiting I'm waiting measuring up you can see I've got my scissors now on the bottom of the frame this is why fly tying videos are such an exercise and error we're waiting we're waiting we're waiting okay here it comes finally just a two or three wraps around cut your short ends off I Go ahead, cut them off. The patient died. There we go. Now with the hackle, this is just a uh, barred type. Matches the color, so I figured I'd run with that. It's real important to get this in really tight at first. Just two or three wraps around. Get your get your. Uh, thread out of the way just two or three times around at the most you just want a representation here same kind of tie off now you're just setting yourself up for a whip finish all you want to do is get your thread forward you've wrapped a couple of times around that hackle and you just want to get forward and uh, make a clean cut there be sure you miss the thread Go forward. This is the waiting game. Go forward. Whip finish that thing. Doesn't need to be super finished or doubled or anything like that. Cut it. Glue it. And you're done. Let me just flip that fly over. I believe we're going to do that here in a second. And take a look at it from the top. Hopefully uh, your quarry will never see it from that angle. But when it lays in there and it starts undulating, it's really a deadly pattern. And just like all patterns I do here, I didn't invent this. Um, it may be derivative from a lot of other things. Joel Hayes is the guy that showed me how to do the original coyote, and we're going to get him to tie that for us sometime soon. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any suggestions.